hell are you doing? I'm just going to watch it. And just, just watch it. Just watch it poof. You can dance. Huh? Look at that. You can make noise. It'll be okay. It's not magic, but it's fun to watch it poof. Hi, I'm Sola, a Food52 resident, and today I'm going to show you how to make Edna Lewis's cheese souffle. It's lots of cheese. Lots of souffle. So we're going to start with two tablespoons of butter, the extra butter for greasing up our pan, two tablespoons of flour. Here we have half a teaspoon kosher salt, a teaspoon of dry mustard, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, a cup of milk, three egg yolks, five egg whites, and then the good stuff. We've got some very fancy schmancy extra sharp white cheddar and Gruyere. For the recipe, she tells you to start by preheating your oven to 425 degrees, which I've done. And we're going to do a little bit of prep before we get into anything. So I'm going to butter a one and a half quart souffle dish. Well, I don't actually have a souffle dish, but I've made this before. You can really use whatever vessel you've got. That's about one and a half quarts. This is my rice pot. It's exactly one and a half quarts. So that's what I'm going to be using today. And it's like, it's kind of like a souffle dish. Like it's tall. It's going to do what it needs to do. I've also done this like in individual portions. You could do this in six coffee mugs that are like heat proof, which is really cute. So you can get individual souffles for all your friends and fam. If you haven't made a souffle, this is a good one to start with. It's really just like basic, cheesy, delicious. I really like the addition of like mustard and cayenne. The thing that really surprised me with Edna Lewis is um, it says Southern cooking, but there's a lot of French influence in there. That's what's really cool with Southern cooking. There's like, there's influence from all over. My oven is preheating. Edna wants you to pop this on top of the oven so it stays warm for when we go to fill it up. You know, a lot of people put a collar on the souffle. That's like a restaurant thing. The collar and then there's like a little thumb trick that you go around and even it out. That makes sure that it rises like tall and straight, but it doesn't really matter. You know, it, it's going to still taste good. I don't care if it's a little bit wonky. I don't need like a perfect straight tall souffle. You know, I like the au naturel vibe. Save your parchment for something else. All right. So next we're going to grate our cheese. This is all about the cheese. I got some, I got some good stuff. I got some really good stuff. When Food52 Accounting sees my receipts, they will see how good this stuff is. <laughs> this is a very expensive souffle that someone else is paying for. But get the best cheese you can find because it's, that's like the main flavor here. It's all about the cheese. So I'm grating five ounces of sharp. I got like, I got really good. This is like the really good cheddar where it has like those little crystals in it from the aging. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? This is the good stuff. So get the, get the best cheese you can afford. If someone else is paying for it, get the best cheese out there. <laughs> so just grating it on a box grater. This is going to make sure that it melts quickly and evenly into our Mornay sauce. So the base of a cheese souffle is, is a Mornay sauce that we then add um, whipped egg whites to. And that's really it. Because it's French, it sounds fancy, but it's just like their version of queso. You know, it's like fluffy queso. You've made queso, you've eaten queso. You can make a souffle. You're like halfway there. So the most important thing is don't use something like American cheese. That's not gonna, not only does that not have much flavor, but the texture is gonna be a little bit weird because um, that stuff has a lot of emulsifiers, which is good sometimes, but it's not good for a souffle. So just go for the best cheddar and the best Gruyere or Swiss style cheese. So something like Emmentaler or Appenzeller or whatever you've got, you know? the kind of cheese with the holes in it. We just want to make sure that it quickly and evenly melts into our sauce. All right, so we're going to start our Mornay sauce by melting two tablespoons of butter in a saucepan. I find it's easiest to whisk these kinds of sauces if you have a saucepan with rounded bottoms. It's just easier for the whisk to get in there and you'll prevent a lot of lumps. Now we're going to let the butter totally melt and get foamy before we whisk in our flour. The main thing with, with making a sauce like this is, is lump management. That's the most important part. Make sure we fight the lumps from step one. It has melted, but I'm going to wait until it foams. 
Our butter is foaming. And now I'm going to add our flour. So it's important to wait till your butter foams because that's how you know that it's gotten hot enough. Butter is made up of a mixture of water and fat and it foams when the water in the butter is like, you know, reaching boiling temp. So I added all the flour all at once and it's like instantly smooth. We're not trying to get any color here. We just want to cook off that raw floury taste. So it's just going to take maybe a minute or two whisking the whole time to make sure that it heats evenly. The color kind of goes from this yellowy to like a foamy white. And that's how you know you're there and you know that your the raw taste from your flour has cooked off. One really like common mistake people make when they're making bechamel and Mornay is they just don't cook the flour enough and then you end up tasting it. You, you, you can taste this like starchiness even through the cheese. It's more likely to develop a really thick skin that way too if you don't cook out the starch. I can smell it. I can smell that the flour is getting toasty. And that's how you know we are, we are there. So now I have one cup of milk that's just been barely warmed. And once again, lump management from the start. So we're going to drizzle in just a little bit at a time and you're going to see as soon as you drizzle it in, it kind of gets tight and you're going to freak out. Just keep whisking, whisking and as you finish adding in all of your milk, it'll thin out. Oh God, it's getting brown. I was talking too much. <laughs> so after the first splash, it looks real tight. Don't worry. Just keep adding no more than a tablespoon at a time in this beginning stage. So we can ensure smooth Mornay action. And because we're using warm milk, it just comes together all like a little bit faster. You want to make sure you're going to add a splash of milk and make sure it's nice and smooth before you add the next splash. That's how you make sure you don't have lumps. That's the most important thing here. If you add all your milk at once, I mean, I've seen like, I've seen Jacques Pepin, when he makes his uh, Mornay, he puts all the milk in there at once, but he's Jacques Pepin, okay? None of us are that good. You cook it for one minute and it's done. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Now, I'm going to switch to a rubber spatula and we are going to add our cheese. Look at this ratio of cheese to, to sauce, okay? How is this not gonna be delicious? I added the cheese first in the recipe and that puts the yolks in first and then the cheese, but actually it's, it doesn't matter. It's totally gonna be okay. Right now we're just making a flavorful base sauce. So however it comes together, it just needs to come together. So don't worry about it. All right, I'm adding three egg yolks and we're gonna stir that in until it's nice and evenly mixed. And then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, and one full teaspoon of dry mustard. This is gonna season it up. And it's really nice, the, the heat from the mustard and cayenne kind of gives you those like mac and cheese vibes. I'm really into it. So I'm just stirring this until it looks mostly, mostly creamy, mostly melted. It's got some little bits that haven't totally melted, but that's okay, because it's gonna hang out for a minute while we whip our eggs. All right, so I'm gonna hold on this spatula because we're gonna need it later for some folding action. But right now I'm going to cover this and leave it on top of the warm stove to allow the rest of the cheese to just melt as it hangs out. And while that happens, we are gonna whip our egg whites. Here I have five egg whites, clean bowl, clean whisk, and we just, we're gonna whip it. We're gonna whip it. Now we're going for soft peaks here. Because a souffle is all about puff, you might think that you need stiff peaks, but actually if you, if you over whip it, then what happens is when it goes in the oven, it's got nowhere to go. It's got too much air in it already, so it'll just collapse. When you have soft peaks, what happens is there's just enough air in there so that when the, it, it gets in the oven, that air expands and there's still room for the egg white proteins to you know lift, grow. So soft peaks, nothing crazy. Don't lose your head. The main thing with egg whites I found is that you need a bigger bowl than you think so you've got room for your whisk to like brew. So I'm using a whisk and doing it by hand because that's the way Edna Lewis does it. But you can use a hand mixer or a KitchenAid. But one thing to keep in mind is because we want soft peaks, it's very easy to over whisk in one of those. So just stop frequently and check and make sure you're not going too far. It folds over, that's what you want. So if you look in the bowl, 
when you lift up your whisk, it should hold a little, a little like a, you know, Dairy Queen swirl situation, and it holds it on top of the whisk too. So now when we get here, you have to move quickly. Because there is no sugar, there's no time. You gotta get folding quickly, or this is just gonna dry out and get really lumpy right in front of your eyes. So we're gonna fold our meringue into our base. The way you do this is you wanna do it in parts. We're gonna start with one third of the mixture, and with the first third of the mixture, just get in there, stir it in. We're lightening up our base, this is very heavy. You're taking something very heavy and adding something very light, so you gotta kinda do it in stages. Now, for the second third, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful, okay? Now we're going for more of a folding action. So folding, what you do is you wanna cut down the middle with your spatula and then kinda like scooch underneath your whole situation and fold it over. I know, I know, it doesn't look like you're actually folding, but you kind of are. So it's like you cut and you scooch and you turn your bowl, there's this whole Wonderful thing that happens when you do that. You're, we're preserving all that air in that meringue that we, we whipped by hand. We took so much care to whip. And I'm not gonna go until it's fully incorporated. Just, there's some streaks in there at this point and that's okay. Now I'm adding my last third of egg whites and you can see it's only been sitting here for a moment and it's already looking dry because without sugar, egg whites really don't live for very long. We're getting in there. We're folding this last bit. For this last bit, I'm going to try and make it mostly streak free, but it's better to have some streaks than to lose all your volume. If you take it all the way, you're gonna lose too much volume. So I've got my warm dish, ooh, quite warm. I'm gonna put this in. Now things are gonna happen quickly. I've got my warm dish, I'm gonna add my souffle mixture to it. We're gonna go into a 425 degree oven, bake it for five minutes, and then Turn down the heat to 400 degrees and let it go for another 15. All right, here we go. Batter's going in. And now we're going right into the oven. So 425, we start with this high heat, which is gonna help the air bubbles in the foam that we just created expand, lift, and then we're going back down to 400 degrees and then it's gonna kind of set. We wanna pull this out while it's still a little creamy in the middle. So it's not gonna be, it doesn't take that long to cook. 15 minutes, the top's gonna to get golden brown. It's gonna lift. We're gonna have a little crusty, cheesy thing on top and then the inside will be nice and creamy and gooey. That's it, that's a souffle. You can make this. You don't even need a mixer. Five minute timer. You can't, you have to be ready for your souffle. Your souffle won't wait for you. Make sure everything's ready. If you want your souffle with a salad, make your salad now. If you want some bread, get your bread ready now. Because when the souffle is ready, it's go time. Okay, we got eight minutes. I said eight minutes a minute ago. It must be like seven and a half. Seven, look, it just turned to seven. Seven minutes. Okay, two minutes. We've uh, reached the top of the pan. All right, so I've got like a good, I've got a good amount of poof. I'd say it's poofed about uh, 30%. That's good poofage. Here we go. Oh boy, look at that, huh? Still a slight jiggle, but the top is nicely set. Got a little poof. It smells really cheesy. Not so bad, not so hard. Nice brown top, a little bit crisp from all that cheese. But if you peek in there, still moist. Now, the key is, this is gonna deflate pretty quickly. So you wanna get, you wanna, you wanna, knock it down before it knocks down on itself. Do you know what I mean? Take control of your souffle. So the best thing to do is get in there before it gets you. Get the souffle before it gets you. So just go straight down the middle with a big spoon. Oh yeah, the biggest spoon you got, you know? Do you see how steamy? What's really great is the edges get really brown from the contact with the pan. I'm gonna get a nice big scoop to serve myself. Ooh, so steamy. It's set, nicely cooked. It's still really creamy, but it's not raw. You know what I mean? There's a difference. You don't want a raw souffle. This is like custardy. This really nice custardy interior to contrast the brown, golden outside vibes. And uh, I mean, there you go. We did it. I think this is a great lunch. Um, have it with a little bit of salad, crusty bread, 
Look at how steamy, cheesy. It's just a great excuse to eat really good cheese. I mean, it just looks like the best fluffy omelet in the world. I'm gonna go in while it's hot. Make sure you serve this right away. Eat this right away. You wanna have this while it's hot. I'm gonna get a little bit of this crusty, crusty from the edge, a little bit of this saucy from the middle. Best of both worlds, it's very hot. Mm. Because the main flavor here is the cheese, I'm really glad that I went for that, the best cheese I could find, because you can really taste it. I can get that nuttiness from the Gruyere, sharpness from the cheddar, a little bit of funk, and then a little kick of cayenne and pepper in the back of your throat. Thanks, Edna. This is a good souffle. Are you an auditory learner? Head over to Play Me a Recipe, a Food 52 original podcast where you can listen to me make this recipe. Soothing sounds of cooking in the background while you cook. We can cook along together. <laughs>